Welcome to the Sanity Project Podcast, where you can awaken your mind to clarity and success even in today's life challenges. We're here to provide insights and solutions that will help you live a sane, healthy, and prosperous life. Here's your host, Joanne Victoria. Hello, everybody. This is Joanne Victoria with another amazing episode of the Sanity Project Podcast. You are here to discover a life of clarity, confidence, sanity, and entrepreneurial success. And I have a gift for you today. And her name is Oz Benari. And it's a she, yes. And (laughs) she's going to talk about starting from scratch, managing change, like your career depends on it. And Oz is a seasoned product management executive skilled in leading and upskilling high-performing teams with a strategic mindset, strong communication, storytelling skills, and a focus on continuous improvement. She held senior product management roles at WeWork and Diligent, managing in complex product lines, driving audience growth, and launching successful product-led organizations. Currently, Oz is a fractional CPO at Dragons Can Fly Web3 product and strategy agency building digital consumer products and coaching startup founders in various industries. And you can read the rest of her bio on my website under episodes. So talk to me about serving on the advisory board for Audio Burst. Oh, Audio Burst was a love at first sight. Because um, they, I was working as a head of product for a media company, and I thought that we're heavily invested in in text and in video, but I thought that we're neglecting the audio part. So I was looking for something different that we could do with audio because I'm a fan of audio. I'm a fan of podcasts, and I was thinking that what can we do? That doesn't exist today. Um, and in my search, I found Audio Burst as um, a provider, as a service provider for us. Um, work with them. We built a product together. Uh, and after I left that company, I, um, I continued to stay in touch with the founders and they were extremely excited to see my excitement from them and, and had me join on their advisory board. So, and we're innovating together. So, uh, these are fun times that fun spending time with the team, uh, building innovation and audio. It sounds like you enjoy what you're doing. Oh, absolutely. Well, then why don't you talk to our audience and I'll remind our audience to listen to this podcast again with a pen and a pad and make notes because you're not going to remember everything. Trust me. And you want to take the notes from Oz's presentation. So starting from scratch is the Amazon bestseller. And I'm gathering since you have this website called starting from scratch, the book.com, and you're going to be presenting the model that you write about in the book. Is that correct? Yeah. And uh, because it's a, it's a short one. Um, what I would like is, so the book is written as the six step model to managing change and how to prepare for change, but also grow when change is either coming your way or you want to plan one, uh, in your career. And what I wanted to convey in the book is that I'm not special. The fact that I changed many times and I feel like I thrived after it. It's not. It's not, I'm not special in any way. I interviewed 200 people while writing the book and all of them followed um, in their way, not even knowing organically, they followed the six steps model. And these are tools that some of you might use and some of you might forget. Um, but these always come handy when change comes your way. Um, so the tools are learning, having a learning mindset. So being open to learning new things and being exposed to things. And, you know, you're doing it right now by listening to this podcast. So, but creating a habit of learning new things and reading newsletters and books and attending courses and really investing in learning what changes are around you and how they might affect you in your career or open opportunities. The second step is to build your resilience. And that means that although 
though the career is so such a big thing of uh, such a big part of our identity, there are so many other great things in our lives, family, friends, interests, hobbies that um, we need to immerse ourselves in spending time um, doing other things so that if change is happening in our career or a bad day happens in our work day, it does not become devastating. It's something that is just a little bump and that other things in our life can fill us up. The third one is to build relationship and network and to um, make sure that you stay in touch with ex-peers and ex-managers and leave on a high note wherever you go um, and not burn bridges because these are the people that know you from work and know you in a career setting and help you grow and advance. And then the last three steps are having a role model and doesn't have to be a specific person, but it can be like a, like a potato head, a combination of multiple people that you admire or experiences that you want to have or people that you want to have part of their life or career to build that role model for yourself. And then the fifth step is to work towards them, unpack who that role model is. What do they know? What are their habits? What are their day to day? Who's in their network? And really try to copy that and build your own role model so that you are your own role model and you're excited to do that. And after we worked so hard preparing for change and growing in change, packing the baggage is such an important exercise to see every experience that we have as something that is positive, that equipped us to be where we are and what we're doing next. And no one can travel to the next destination without packing. So packing a baggage is an exercise. You can find it on my website for free. Um, so there are no excuses not to do it. And packing a baggage is to look at all the experiences and unpack what skills and experiences you can take to your next adventure and what people can be in your network and help you grow. And wow, I don't know if we did it right on time, but uh, this is like a, an iceberg of what is in the book. And the book also is also filled in with my stories as well as stories of others who changed and thrived. And I hope that it is an inspiration for other people to know that if you have the right tools, you can change. And should in most instances, especially now, people's work, people's jobs have changed in the indus corporate industry, and they're flailing in choosing the right direction. Yes. So now for our audience, they might not all have been aware of this fractional uh, word as a tool. So would you describe what fractional means to you? Yeah. So, um, just for context, we were uh, earlier when you introduced, you introduced me, you said that I'm a fractional CPO. So, um, I'm a chief product officer at multiple companies and being fractional, unlike a consultant means that you join a company and you do it, um, in a fractional way. So that means like 50%, 40%, 90%, whatever the number of days or hours you and the other company choose to do it. But you do a job as if you're one of the team members. Um, it's not bound by a specific project or time. It's bound by need. And then once the company hires you as a fractional, you work with them with the team uh, for a while. And then it's possible that they'll need you sometimes a little bit more, a little bit less. Um, but it's a very good agreement for people who are either in transition or for companies that um, need a specific support or assistance in a, in a specific area in the company, but they uh, either don't need it full time or they can't afford someone experience full time. So you could do it uh, part time. Uh, so it's a, it's a really good win-win situation where experienced people can come and help companies, but also companies can afford hiring these super expensive, um, individuals and they can thrive in supporting multiple companies at the same time. I think it's an amazing concept because, excuse me, <clears throat> edit that out. Uh, it's an amazing concept because, as you say, f for a period of time, they can't afford someone full time. So they use you for 40, 50 percent, 60 percent, something like that. Use you or someone like you in that role and they still get what they need to get. Exactly. And in in uh, several of my clients, what I've done is I've 
joined, built a team or recovered a team, you know, kind of restructured the team to uh, be more um, efficient and effective. Um, and then either hired someone in my position or um, hired um, the right team as a kind of structure. And then I moved on. So um, it is a way for also companies to have like this trusted, experienced person that comes from the specific practice to choose a team. Because sometimes, you know, hiring managers or CEOs are not necessarily equipped or knowledgeable to hire a specific profession. And for them to bring someone that either is not interested in a full-time or um, they can't afford, but they can come with their experience to build that practice instead of them. Um, how long so is how long is excuse me? How long is that co- this concept of fractional of XXX been around that you're uh-huh. aware of? So I so I think there are various I heard of it in the last couple of years. Mm-hmm. Um but I think there are various names for it. So some people um also also name it um portfolio to have a portfolio company. And that means that you have multiple streams of income. The difference between a portfolio and a fractional is that it's possible, for example, um, like me, um, I have part of my career or part of the way I'm making money is by being a fractional CPO, but I also do speaking engagements and workshops on behalf of my book. Um, so I have a portfolio uh, career because I can do multiple things. But um, previously, um, portfolio was also used for in case you do the same job for several companies. And the difference between being con- a consultant and a fractional is that usually a consultant will come from an outside, will behave as an outsider, will either be appointed to a project or a team, and it's bound by kind of start and end date. And fractional is really being part of the team. Um, you don't know necessarily when this person will uh, will leave. Um, it, they just don't work full time. Yeah, I'm 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 enthralled with the word and the and the purpose of the word and how you make it work in companies that you you know you want to be at because this timing here, you know, post COVID, et cetera, is um, things have changed. Work titles have changed. Work businesses have changed. And for you to be able to go into this where you have opportunities to just, you know, okay, come in and do this chore, whatever, we'll name it a chore for today. And, you know, you work with this team on this project and then you're, you know, you start at 60%, then you go down to 10% because that's the way it usually works anyway. No mm-hmm. matter, you know, it, it's never 100%, 100% of the time. Yeah. And I think it's an amazing opportunity. So, for example, one of the things I wanted is to dab into new technologies and, um, in Web3 specifically. So, when I started a year ago, Web3 companies were not, um, very well funded and they were very early stage. So they did need a CPO, but they, um, they didn't need it full time. Um, uh, it was a, you know, sometimes even the whole team was working part time on an idea, uh, or that they couldn't afford someone to work full time, but they didn't notice that they need it. And, um, doing a fractional work allowed me to immerse myself into, um, you know, new technologies and new ways of doing things, which is extremely exciting for me, but I could not find a full-time job. So I feel that was a win-win where, mm-hmm. you know, it was an interesting place for me, but also the way and the model that worked for the hiring manager. Very interesting. You can tell yeah. that I'm very excited <laughs> about this. Yeah. And there are fractional CMOs and fractional CFOs and COOs. Um, so there are all of them. And there are several communities that uh, both teach people how to be fractional. We share uh, agreements and contracts and best practices. And we hire each other because um, I mentioned to you before we started 
to record is that uh, one of my clients is actually, I was actually brought by someone who's a fractional CFO. So we also find each other jobs and we identify areas because we're all senior executives. We identify areas and gaps where the company needs help. And then we can bring people from the community. So whoever is interested in doing this type of work should definitely look out for um, these communities and on board to them. Some of them are free and some of them uh, are paid, uh, but it, it's a, a community that both supports each other and also grows together. And um, I'm a big fan of uh, of networking for your career growth. It's a full chapter I wrote about it. So I think this one is just another example of how you can grow with other people. Yeah, it sounds like a creative opportunity. So let's go back to your six steps, six step model. We've got learning mindset, creating something, creating a move, building your resilience, building your resilience, attending courses, build your resilience, uh, potato head. I like that experience. <laughs> and, well, it's, there's a visual there. Pretty much every kid yeah. born in America or otherwise knows what you're talking about. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you you just take the best out of the, the least and use it and work toward a role model. And I think that's the key. Yeah, it's really to, you know, it, it, there's this um, famous um, image on the Internet that you see a little kitten looking in the mirror and sees, seeing a lion. And that very much resonated with me when I'm thinking of a role model, because unless uh, you kind of see uh, who you want to be and where you want to go. How do you can you really pave the way? And I think that this visual for me is very much like, OK, in the future, I would like to be introduced this way and I would like to have these accomplishments and these experiences. And I want to know these type of people or have this type of experience and knowledge. And I think that we don't uh, always give ourselves the time and grace to create a, a list, a written list. You mentioned people should take a note. So I hope that that would be the first one. Create a list of who you want to be and then slowly grow into that. You know, start meeting the relevant people, ask the people around you how you can move into that direction, learn new things. It's, it's extremely empowering to own your future and work towards it. And the thing is, um, as long as you have that roadmap, it doesn't matter if it takes a year, two year, three year, five years, but as long as you have a roadmap of where you want to be and you grow yourself to be there, then you're constantly in this growth mindset that whenever change comes your way, so you know, you can accelerate that plan or you can, you know, uh, create, uh, you know, smaller milestones on the way to the grand plan. But it is an expiring, an inspiring way to live your life. Yes, I think you're very fortunate to be in this jungle of fractionals, really. <laughs> well, it just makes a lot of sense because you can be a, a CPO or a CFO as well. Yes. Um, well, it's not to change jobs because I I wouldn't be able to be a CFO or uh, a CMO. Like that's what product is my craft. Okay. Um, but I would be able to be a CPO at an e-commerce company and at a, uh, a, a, a real estate company. Uh, and that is exciting that you can mix and match between different uh, industries, but still do your job. Okay, so you have a website called Starting from Scratch the Book dot com. Yeah. Tell us about that website. Yeah, so on the website you can learn more about uh, the book, uh, about the six steps. There is more content to unpack those and how to get started. There is also many uh, um, exercises that you could do. My book is written as chapters and workbook. So it's really to guide you and help you towards kind of building that muscle that it's okay to change. Um, because there's, you know, there's, it's, there's, it's the same sentence, but you can say it's in different tones or different 
um, a different excitement level. One is, oh my God, change is coming. And the other one is, oh my God, change is coming. Mm-hmm. Right. And so how do you make myself, what, how do you make yourself, um, agile and open that, you know, you change towards that role model or, um, so if change comes your way in the form of layoff or reorg, you don't need to lose your job, but, you know, sometimes our day to day becomes boring. So how do you reinvent yourself in the same workplace? And I did it multiple times. I stayed with the same employer, but I reinvented myself and grew the, uh, the things that I was doing and grew my skills and experiences because I was open to it. And I built my role model within that company. Um, so in the website, you'll, and in the book, you'll find more, uh, exercises and practices to flex that, um, that muscle. And there's also a collection of, uh, videos and talks and podcasts I was on, uh, in case you want to learn more. Well, there you go, audience. I'll say it again. Take your pen and paper because you learn more by uh, writing it in your own hand as opposed to typing it on the computer. So. Go to her website and subscribe to her newsletter. She's got one that is filled with tips for career builders. Join her course on networking for career su- success and buy her book. She has here or buy the book. No, no. And buy the book. <laughs> and I think that um, I think that once you listen to the podcast and then check the website and then buy the book, um, is it a standard to 200 pages yeah, okay 20 pages exactly. there we go 120 yes 110 <laughs> times two and just get the book follow everything that you need to follow because this is a new interesting way for those of you who are number one easily bored yeah because if you're easily bored because you go oh god and now what if you have now what every day of the week you're going to not do a good job that's a double negative um <laughs> yes, I said that. I did that. And, you know, she's a pro- top product led growth influencer. And we're not talking TikTok here, people. We're talking the real world. And I think that you would in- appreciate Oz Bernari. So remember that starting from scratch of the book, go to the website and you subscribe to her website and her newsletter full of tips for career builders, join her course on networking or buy the book. And that's it. And then you can link with her with LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook, which also shows on her page on my website. I want to thank Oz for being here today. She's given a great, um, the six steps are phenomenal. And that's something you should do every six months or so, if not more often. So to keep it clean. And I thank her for being here today. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Sanity Project podcast. Please go to AskJoanneVictoria.com to listen to more podcasts. Check out Joanne's coaching programs and get a free copy of her report, Five Steps to Achieve Life-Work Harmony. That's AskJoanneVictoria.com. Take care and thanks for being here.